This presentation covers demand and supply. Demand is a schedule showing how much of a good or service people will purchase if everything other than price is held constant. Law of demand, a negative or inverse relationship between the price of any good or service and the quantity demanded, holding other factors constant. That is, that is people buy more of something when the price is lower, and people buy less of it when the price is higher. So, when we say ceteris paribus, or all things equal, we mean all things, but some of the more important things to consider being constant are things like income, taste and preferences, and prices of other goods. Relative prices and money prices. Relative price is the price of a commodity in terms of another commodity. For instance, how many apples could I buy for the price of one steak? Money price, the price we observe today in today's dollars, this is just how much something actually costs. How many dollars does it cost to buy a steak? Demand schedule is the table relating prices to quantities demanded. We must consider on the demand schedule the time dimension. That is, we want to make sure that we're comparing across the same time frame. And constant quality units. That is, we're indifferent between any individual unit of that good. The demand curve is just a graphical representation of the demand schedule. It has a negatively sloped line to show the inverse relationship that we spoke about earlier. The next two slides will have an example of a demand schedule and its corresponding demand curve. Here's the demand schedule, and here's the curve. We can look at individual or market demand curves. Market demand curves are just the aggregation of all individual demand curves for any particular good or service. Here is a demand schedule showing two buyers' personal demands and the combined demands. Here's a graph of each of those demands and their aggregation into the market demand curve. Here is an already aggregated demand schedule for a market. And here's the graph of that demand curve. We, when considering shifts in demand, Imagine the government gives every registered college student in the United States a digital device that utilizes flash memory cards. If something other than price changes, then we can shift out the demand curve or shift in the demand curve. In this case, there will be an increase in the number of flash memory cards demanded at each and every possible price, and so the curve will shift to the right or out. Here is a graph showing a shift to the right or outward and a shift to the left or inward of demand. From D1 to D2 represents an increase in demand and a shift to the right. From D1 to D3 represents a decrease in demand and a shift to the left. Ketter's Paribus conditions. These determinants of the relationship between price and quantity are unchanged along a curve. Changes in these factors cause a curve to shift. Normal goods. Goods for which demand rises as income rises. Most goods are normal goods. Inferior goods. Goods for which demand falls as income rises. Examples of a normal good would be something along the lines of movie tickets, where if your income goes up, you're probably more likely to go see movies, and thus you'll buy more tickets. An inferior good example would be possibly off-brand cereal, where if your income went down, you may switch and buy more of off-brand cereal. Several determinants of demand include income, tastes and preferences, and the prices of related goods. That's substitutes or complements. Substitutes. Two goods are substitutes when a change in the price of one causes a shift in demand for the other in the same direction as the price change. That is, a good is a substitute if the price, for instance, increases for one good and it substitutes demand increases, or if the price of one good increases, we buy more of its substitute good instead. An example of substitutes might be Xboxes and Playstations. If the price of a Playstation goes up, you might be more inclined to buy an Xbox. Complements would be the opposite of substitutes. Two goods are complements when a change in the price of one causes an opposite shift in the demand curve for the other. You can think of something like movie theater tickets and popcorn. If the price of tickets goes down, then you're likely to buy more popcorn. Thus, its demand has gone up. Other determinants of demand could be expectations. 
expectations of future prices, income, or product availability. Also, market size, the number of buyers. An example of expectations increasing current prices is when bullet prices were expected to rise and that caused an increase in current demand for bullets. Changes in demand versus changes in quantity demand. A change in any condition that we consider within Keteris Paribus will, lead, will be a change in demand, that is a shift in demand. The entire demand curve will shift to the right or to the left. The only thing that can cause the entire curve to move is a change in a determinant other than the goods own price. However, if the goods own price changes, that's when we would expect a change in quantity demanded. This is just a movement along the curve to a different price and demand point. This slide illustrates a change in quantity demanded. Now we'll discuss supply. Supply is a schedule showing the relationship between price and the quantity supplied for a specified time period, other things being equal. The amount of a product or service that firms are willing to sell at alternative prices. Much like the law of demand, there is also a law of supply. The higher the price of a good, the more of that good sellers will make available over a specified time period, other things being equal. This results in a positive slope, which mirrors the slope of the demand curve. Here is an example of lobster fishermen making decisions that reflect what we would expect from a supply curve. The supply schedule is a table relating prices to quantity supplied at each price. Supply curve is a graphical representation of the supply curve, and as we said earlier, it's positively sloped. The next two slides show a supply schedule and the corresponding supply curve. Similar to market demand, we can calculate market supply by aggregating the individual supply schedules. And here are the graphical representations of those supply schedules, or the individual supply curves and the aggregate supply curve or market supply curve. Supply curves shift similarly to demand curves. A new, for instance, a new method of manufacturing flash memory cards significantly reduces the cost of production. Producers of flash memory cards will supply more at any given price, and so the supply curve will shift. Here is a graph depicting a supply shift inwards and a supply shift outwards. From S1 to F, S2, we have a supply shift outwards where supply is increasing for any given price. From S1 to S3, we have a supply shift inwards where supply is decreasing for any given price. Several things can affect the supply curve. Some of the more important are technology and productivity, cost of inputs, price expectations, taxes and subsidies, and the number of firms in the industry. Here is an example of the supply curve shifting due to a new tax by the government. Again, similar to demand, we need to distinguish between a shift in the supply curve and changes in the quantity supplied. We have a shift in the supply curve when something that we're considering constant with regards to Ceteris Paribus changes. The entire supply curve shifts to the right or to the left. The only thing that can cause the entire curve to move is a change in a determinant other than the goods on price. Conversely, a shift along the supply curve happens because of a change in price, and we call this a change in quantity supplied. Equilibrium or market clearing price. This is the price that clears the market, the price at which quantity demanded equals quantity supplied, the price where the demand curve intersects the supply curve. At this price, the suppliers are willing to provide the exact amount that the market demand has. This demand and supply schedule put together shows an example of the equilibrium price. At this price, we have the exact same amount supplied and the exact same amount demanded. Here we can see the graphical representation of that. We consider equilibrium the situation when quantity supplied equals quantity demanded at a particular price. 
There tends to be no movement of the price of the quantity away from this point unless demand or supply changes. Equilibrium is a stable point. Any point that is not equilibrium is unstable and will not persist. The equilibrium price. This is the price toward which the market price will automatically tend to gravitate. There's no outcome better than this for both consumers and producers. Shortages. This is the situation when quantity demanded is greater than quantity supplied. It exists at any price below the market clearing price. Shortages and scarcity are not the same thing. Here's an example of an upcoming possible shortage. The government limits sellers to receiving a price that is below the equilibrium price. The quantity supplied is always going to remain below the quantity demanded, and so you'll have a constant shortage. Converse to shortages, you have surpluses. These exist when quantity supplied is greater than quantity demanded. They, also, they exist when at any price above the market clearing price. This is because at any price above the market clearing price, people will demand less than the market clearing quantity but suppliers will supply more than the market clearing quantity. Here's an example of a shortage that you may all be familiar with. If you've ever tried to get tickets to a big game, you know all about shortages. Since the quantity of tickets is fixed, the price can go pretty high. Enter the scalper. Now, most musicians don't want to sell their tickets beyond the reach of the average fan, so they choose to sell their tickets low. However, this gives a reason for people like scalpers to buy those tickets at a low price and sell them at the higher price that they know they can charge. Here's a graphical representation of the shortage for Super Bowl tickets. In this example, the equilibrium price is here at $6,000. However, they sell them at $800, and so we have a demand of $175,000 and a supply of only $80,000.